Hey guys, it's Tom Kelly. I am biking through the rail trails of Maine. I recorded an entire Tom Kelly show podcast on a bike with a selfie stick and so far I haven't died. Trigger warning, spoiler alert, I'm studying for my COVID test. You are experiencing the Eastern Trail on the Tom Kelly Show. Uh, the Eastern Trail is one of those converted rail trails uh, that uh, are great for biking. Uh, I figured I would do a selfie stick edition of the Tom Kelly Show. Uh, my friend Pete McGarrigal uh, was talking about Casey Nestat, who is a big shot video blogger. Uh, I met him in the year 2015 with Howie Mandel. I was working at America's Got Talent at the time. Uh, and long story short, I had gotten invited to a show with the Impractical Jokers. And uh, uh, it was at South Street Seaport. And I got to hang out in Howie Mandel's trailer with Casey Nestat and another Big Shot video blogger. And the embarrassing part was that I did not know who they were at the time. I mean, millions and millions of followers. Uh, and God bless, there's a great line uh, that I once heard in an internet meeting around 2015, ironically, uh, that was, what do you call, you know, like they have the phrase internet famous, Casey Nestat is internet famous but if you know who he is he's just famous and there you go i mean uh so that's a good thing here so pete mcgargle was saying casey nestat is video blogging again and doing curious things and i thought i'd find a way to keep the podcast fun and just share where share the things going on in my life and uh i love podcasting from maine because i come up here to clear my head and i end up doing more wacky internet things here than I do at home. Uh, and then also another thing you do more than you do at home, wearing my hometown t-shirt. Does anybody else get that way where the further away you get from home, the more about home you get? Like I always joke that uh, New Yorkers won't say hi to other New Yorkers. However, if I'm up here in Maine and I see another New York license plate, Oh my God, what part of New York are you from? Oh my God, good to see you. That kind of a thing. So uh, one real thing happening in real time, if we're sharing a real time adventure, uh, my friend Chris, who is my friend who uh, gets me to come up to Maine, and he's the guy who showed me this magical wonderland that got me through the pandemic. Uh, my buddy Chris, who I spent... Uh, two if not three full days with uh got COVID so now I still have three days left on the vacation trailer uh and uh, I'm in this weird spot of if I'm gonna get COVID I want it now I want it today I don't have to be back in New York for real until Tuesday I have a good show booked for Saturday but it's with my friend Ben you got you met Ben uh you met Ben Rosenfeld. He was on the podcast before. Ben is headlining and uh, doing a, a special in New York City. I'm supposed to bring my nice video camera, and then I'm going to perform on the special too and open for him. But you know what? Ben's a nice guy. He'd forgive me if I had COVID. Uh, but you know who won't forgive me? Um, uh, CBS. You know, like, uh, it's funny. We, we make the joke, but right now, uh, I used a joke studying for my COVID test, but I uh, am performing at uh, two, if not three TV shows right now that are still very caring uh, about not spreading the virus to the people who work there. And I respect that. Uh, but uh, as a guy who also had one false positive on a uh, COVID test on a day when I was making a lot of money on a year when I wasn't making a lot of money. I, I, I get very nervous every time I take a COVID test. So right now though, I am like five or six days away from having to work. And this would be the window. If I had COVID today, you know, I think the CDC says you have to wait five days now. I don't even know what the damn rules are, but this would be the day to kind of like set the clock. So, uh, sadly, people, uh, we are running a, I, I went to the drugstore. Oh, one thing you should know, one learning thing is COVID tests 
you can get a free COVID test. If you have insurance, you just, instead of taking the COVID test at a cash register at the drugstore, you have to take it to the pharmacy and they have to run it through your insurance. My particular insurance, which is not the best insurance, it's not the worst, they gave me four tests for the month. I was only gonna take two, but now I took four and uh, I'm gonna just test myself a lot today and tomorrow. Uh, and if I don't have it, then I'm going to go back to hoping I never get COVID again. Uh, so like right now I will, you know, I'll eat a COVID tree. You know, I don't know what the joke is. There's a joke there. So all I know for sure is I looked at the COVID test and, uh, I'm pregnant. So you're asking Tom, are there any actual signs that you are sick? And the answer is maybe... You know, I'm still recovering from a half cold I got at the Black Eyed Peas concert. You know, like, so I have like a little bit of upper respiratory, like cough, cough, get the phlegm out. You know, I still have that slight sore throat, but I mean, we're up to three weeks with it now. Uh, but the fun part about wondering whether or not I'm sick is I've been having some vivid dreams and nightmares. Uh, and, uh, you know, and you don't know if that's because I'm living alone and sleeping alone in a new place. And I had the most vivid friggin' nightmare last night. Uh, it was about my friend John McCann. So John was a regular on my old podcast, thisshowagain.com. And, and that podcast was about, God, uh, 15 years ago now. He passed away 12 or 13 years ago now. It's a, it's a while. And I just had this really vivid, vivid dream that I bumped into him while up here in Maine. And he wasn't paying attention to me. And I was convinced that my friend John had faked his own death for some reason. And I found him hiding up here in Maine. And we were talking and he was kind of playing it cool. And then I had to figure out how do I tell my friend Pete McGarrigal that I found John McCann and for some reason he faked his own death. And then I'm obsessing over why would John fake his own death? Which family members was he mad at? Which ex-girlfriend was he avoiding? I mean, I was just completely convinced the man faked his own death. And I had this recurring sort of element to the dream of uh, when I woke up, I said, oh, my God, did John really fake his own death? And I completely forgot that I had gone to his funeral. And uh, I'm sorry, have you, you guys have, uh, did you guys ever know anybody who faked their own death? No, yep, no, see, but that's what it was. I woke up and I was convinced that John had faked his own death and it took me a good 10 minutes of just lying there in bed to remember I went to the funeral, I saw his dead body and honestly, John's funeral and John's dead body, it, I have the best friggin' funeral story about that. How are you today? Doing great, sir, thank you. That's another thing I like about Maine. People say hi on the bike trails. In New York, you wonder, are they gonna mug you? So here's what you have to understand. If I had one friend who would fake his own death, it was my friend, John McCann. John is one of those personalities who is even bigger now that he's gone than when he was alive. Uh, he was always a man of mystery. He didn't like his friends talking to each other. Uh, he ran his circles of friends the way bin Laden ran Al Qaeda. And, and it sounds like crazy, but no circle of friends knew about the other truly until his actual wake and funeral. And I was going through a stage, a, a weird stage of friendship with John. Uh, you know, John had met a girlfriend John had met a girlfriend. Her name was uh, Nancy. He, actually, all his girlfriends were named Nancy. And the funny one with John was, uh, I couldn't tell if things were good or bad with Nancy. He was kind of at that kind of a stage. 
and he uh, he really didn't talk to me much while he was dating Nancy. It was all Nancy this, Nancy that. And then it, it, it came up to the Super Bowl. It was Super Bowl time. And God bless John. He, uh, he said he would come to New York City for a Super Bowl party with me. And I was out in Massapequa at my parents' house. And I'm like, great, we'll take the train around 2 o'clock. I call him around 2 o'clock, no answer. He doesn't want to go to Long Island. Uh, he, uh, you know, whatever it is, no answer. He's supposed to go from Long Island to my friend Charlie's house to... So John was supposed to go from Long Island to my friend Charlie's house in New York City, right across the street from my apartment. And we were going to go to a Super Bowl party together. And what do you know? Time to go on the train and John's not answering the phone, okay? He's dodging my calls. So uh, I didn't push too hard to get John to come to the party. I, I just was not in the mood to beg a friend to come and hang out. And I, I, I don't want to say I regret it, but I regret it. Uh, if I knew he was going to die that Tuesday, <sighs> if I knew he was going to die that Tuesday, I would have pushed harder for him to come to the party. So he passes away on Tuesday. I feel like a big a-hole. And the wake is on that Friday. Now realize he was supposed to go out with me on Sunday. And then I never talked to him. I never talked to him. I never talked to him again. All I knew was he sort of stood me up. And I always felt like maybe I didn't try hard enough to get him to come out with me that night. So now it's time for the wake and you have to go and pay respect to the mom and the girlfriend. Uh, the girlfriend was from South America. Uh, I want to say Colombian. Uh, John, as an Irishman, uh, always wished he was from South America. He had great respect for uh, the culture of people from South America. And all his girlfriends were Nancy, and I feel like they were all from South America. I could be wrong about that one. So anyway, there I am. I'm at the wake, and I wait the long line to go and see John's mom and his girlfriend, Nancy. Nancy number two. And... Uh, I get up to his body. I'm fighting back tears... And all of a sudden, Nancy says to me, Tom, how did John look at the Super Bowl party on Sunday? And I'm like, what do you mean? He said he went to a Super Bowl party with you on Sunday. Now realize he died on, uh, on Tuesday. Uh, I, I don't know what to say. The man told his girlfriend he went out with me and he wasn't returning my calls. And there I am in front of his deceased body, not knowing what to say with a line of a hundred people behind me to go see the casket and John and, and his mom. So what do I do? I just pretended I was about to cry and ran away. But it's just funny. You sit there and you think about God, how close you are to people and how some people were just so big and so large in life that it's 12 years later and I'm still dreaming about that damn man of mystery. I mean, I'm on a bike trail, on vacation, and I don't know if it's a symptom that I'm sick or just that freaked out by an old friend wondering, did my friend John really fake his own death? And is he really hiding up here in Maine? I know that's not the case, but I spent 10 minutes this morning wondering that, and now another 10 minutes on a bike ride telling you all about it. Here's the other thing I'm realizing is I did not put on any mosquito repellent. So every time I pull over, stop the bike to tell you some of the story, 
the longer I take to tell, tell ah, the longer I take to tell you the story, the more likely I am to die of West Nile virus. How are you guys? I'm a comedian, uh, just doing a quick podcast. There ain't no mosquitoes around here. Yeah, what, they're not mosquitoes? What's landing on my leg? What's gonna kill me? I'm telling you, what are no the mosquitoes. What, what are those little bugs landing on me? Oh my God, the Mainers are heckling me on my bike ride. They're treating me like the tourist that I am. This is why you don't come off season, people. Here's the other thing I've realized coming to Maine in September versus June. All the Mainers who want my tourist money have gone back to Massachusetts. And now all that are left are people who don't want to hear my bullshit. By the way, that was a very New York moment. Guy walking by playing music out loud. And this moment is just for Karen Ruiz. Right behind me, I use the Bird ID app. Uh, there are two double-breasted coromants right behind me. And I'm going to get on the bike quickly because the old guys are walking back in my direction. And I don't want to misidentify the birds and have them make fun of me. Seriously, uh, it's like I'm on the biking trail getting heckled by the two old dudes from the Muppets, except this time they're in flannel and can shoot me. So one thing that's cool when you do a rail trail bike ride is you can see the remnants of the railroad crossing. So this was a road, and then you can see what was the railroad bridge that went over it. So I'm seven miles in at the turnaround point. And yeah, uh, totally blowing the diet, blowing the exercise, getting myself a Dairy Queen blizzard. Why? Because I feel like it. Uh, also, I'm realizing I now understand why more people don't go biking, video blogging with selfie sticks. It's a real pain in the ass to hold while you're working handbrakes. So the great question is, is it really biking if... You are riding with a selfie stick, traveling basically, I don't know, three miles an hour, and you stop for Dairy Queen in the middle. And I'm going to say, as I go downhill a little bit more dangerously, no. Uh, oh, but look, this is a good shot, but I'm going to die. Did not know this hill was here when I set the selfie stick up. Oh, yep. There's an experienced biker thinking I'm a horse's ass. Uh, but for real, uh, I, I had my Dairy Queen. I had more ice cream than I deserve. I'm back on the trail. It's about, I, I went from uh, Scarborough to Gorham. And now I'm going from Gorham back to Scarborough. Uh, the temperature has dropped. The clouds have sort of overtaken the sky. It has that it could rain at any second feeling to it. So I'm gonna honestly, uh, look, ooh, look, the Jeep is actually stopped for the bikers. How cool is that? And you know what I'm gonna do, people? I am going to uh, stop pontificating. I'm gonna focus on the roads. And dude, I gotta go get a COVID test result uh, waiting in the Jeep. So let's see what happens. Uh, the other thing I realized as I bike through the marsh is, thank God I recorded most of this show on the way out and not on the way back because on the way back, I'm so tired. I have no stories that will be interesting. And pausing on the bridge to enjoy one last view of the Scarborough Marsh. Ah. I know it sounds crazy because I'm recording and talking with you guys, but I really am taking time up here to be present, recharge and hope that this energy brings me creativity when I get back to New York. And I'm realizing I still have a COVID test to check. I just pulled over to look at a bird. That white bird with the long neck is called a great egret. I live my life with no egrets. That's, that's bird watcher humor. That's birding humor. So here we go, friends, the big ending of the podcast. We're back at the Jeep. 
COVID test is... It's kind of negative or to the right. You know what? I'll, I'll do a second test later. So I had an ending to the show that just isn't working with this weird looking test. I wanted to say, hi, this is Tom Kelly ending this week's Tom Kelly show with no COVID and no egrets. Good night, Scarborough, Maine.